Ooh. Ooh. No, I had to do it. Ooh, what's good? Today's dunk day. Oh, already off the bat, stay tuned for the dunk vlog. I know that's what you want to see, but this is the show. This is the introduction to the show. And this our intros are important because they they get your attention. I'm trying to snag it. Snag your attention. Today we talk about comedy, love, and health and wellness, interchangeability and intermingling, and how they're vice versa. And also, can we hit a freaking 50-inch vertical, bro? Well, stay tuned for the Dunk Life tip of the day at the very freaking end of this thing. And maybe you'll have the, the tools necessary to achieve your dreams. Okay? Thanks. Energetic skin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to my own brain, tuning into the frequency of gratitude. Oh, it's filled me with such love. Everything's perfect. Right now, remember to do your meditation. Remember, everything is perfect. What is this turning into? I don't know. Welcome. What's good? What's today? Um, dunk day. That's all I know. It's all that matters. I'm going to go dunk today, but I'm keeping it gradual. I'm, my hamstring is getting better. I can officially say that. It's super slow. I've been avoiding even sitting. I only really sit to do, do this podcast, and then I try to get up. I don't like to sit on this hard chair, but my hamstring's getting better. It's super slow, but feeling good. I'm going to try to jump a little bit. I still can't do my full penultimate stride, so I'm going to keep it really light, but it's really good progress, and it's long-term. Speaking of long-term, I'm working on that part two video, how I went from 40 inches to 42.5, and it's a long story. And I'm going through all the videos and the milestones, and it's a really cool story. Like, I was putting it all together and getting the storyline uh, in, in place so I can remember, oh, yeah, I had that injury. Oh, yeah, that's what happened there. And trying to get into a story that I, I can tell to you guys because it's easier to understand. Speaking of that, I want to go to the show Explained, Mind, Mind Explained. That was a pretty good segue. But anyway, it was... It's really good. There's so much I learned from it that I think will be re very helpful and you and also help you understand why it's been so long since I increased and all those different things. But basically, it's long term. What I've noticed about this is that I didn't really take that long, but like I would something would happen like an injury and then six months later I make progress or I, I start a strength phase and then like six months later I see the results. So it's not that long, but it feels long looking back and like thinking, man, I didn't, I didn't do anything for a year or whatever. But it's, it just takes time. So this is another injury, the hamstring. And that's what today's about is like, can I hit a 50? But before that, I want to talk about that show mind explained two recommendations I got. Um, the mind explained on Netflix is called explained. There's two series explained and one's just explained and it's just different expl explanations. <laughs> and the other one is the mind explained, I think. And so it was like psychedelics, meditation, and the other one I forget, but, um, I forget, what was I about to say about the mind explained with the long term? The oh, when you remember things, when you remember things, creating a story behind it helps you remember it so much better. So just now when I made that story of of my when I was talking about that story of my uh, journey through dunking, if you if it's a story, you'll remember the parts better. And the extreme example is that they were doing memory competitions and it was like hundreds of numbers, but they turn those numbers into words like a five becomes something they associate the numbers with like images and symbols. And then they envision like they're walking through a city that they remember. Like for example, maybe your apartment or something that's not a city, but you know what I mean? And then you put those objects there. So when you walk through that path that you always walk through, you see those objects. So for example, five, one, six could be like a, I, I've, I'm going to make something up like a donkey, a salt lamp and a computer. And I'll put that on my kitchen table and then I'll always walk the same path through my apartment. So when I see the kitchen table, I remember the donkey, the salt lamp, and and laptops. Wow, my memory works. But the point is, is like you make a story out of the numbers and the pictures. So that way, when you're recalling it, you're just going through a story that's easier to remember than you're just trying to remember five one six. And then so they were able to remember insane amounts of things. And that's mind opening, eye opening that you can challenge your mind. And that's what I love about everything about life is your mind opening and speaking about more mind opening. I watched, um, something's burning with Bert Kreischer. This is recommend recommendation number two. 
Something's Burning with Burt Kreischer, Chris Stefano, and Sal Vol- Volcano. And they just, it's a great show. And what I love is they stopped editing it and they just let it run and they make jokes, but they just see like how the real conversation flows for an hour. They make food, but they just talked about the comedy scene and I'm so fascinated by it. And I, I'm a huge fan, but it was so cool to see them talking, um, about the differences between New York and LA and the different types of people and how when you're close together, um, you're, you have to be a little quicker, not to say that LA people are slow, but like your responses are quick and you're almost like training your brain cause you're interacting with so many people so fast. And those are the type of things I love that when you look, you have to observe people and it sounds like you're, you're comparing. And when you compare, people think there's like judgment there, but there's not. It's just, it's so fascinating to understand the differences and understanding what you're doing. And it made me understand like, what, where am I? And how does that appeal to my skills? Like, I love to do this podcast. I love to dunk. I love to take care of my body. I love to talk to people. I love to talk a lot. I love to make a lot of energy. I like to make videos. I like to, is that, am I in the right environment for my skills? So things like that. It's really helpful. I love self-discovery. I'm huge into that. What's going on? Are we going to talk about the 50 inch vertical? Yes. We'll get there anyway. And then on top of it, they were laughing so much and they were talking about health and sickness. And I was thinking like when I'm healthy, like I say all the time, sleeping well, eating well and exercising well, it's almost impossible to be negative. Like the other day, some days I feel negative no matter what. And it's usually one of the, one of those things is lacking or sometimes I just have a negative day. And it's like, why am I thinking negative when everything's going well? And then there's days like yesterday and today where I'm just like, even if I try to think of like, what are the bad things I can't, because it's just, I'm such in a positive mood. And I think health, I tweeted this, my tweets are getting very, very deep. <laughs> I just have these thoughts and I don't know where else to put them. So I put them on Twitter. So, but it's like health equals happiness and happiness equals health. So it's like when you're healthy, I feel happy, but also the more you enjoy things, like the more you're happy, like the more you're laughing, the healthier you'll be. You'll be. Like, I think like, like they were, I don't know if this is true or not, but it's, it is for me is like, at least it seems that way. People that are always laughing and having a good time and enjoying and being able to be in that positive mindset don't get sick as often and vice versa. It's like someone that's always negative. They're always getting sick. It's like a spiral, you know, it's like your, your self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. Now all of that combined, the mental games, this is turning. I love this so far, the mental games, the enjoyment, the health and happiness. Can you reach a 50 inch vertical? If you're, this is your first podcast, you're like, where did I just go? But the story's unfolding before you. I just hope this is recording and not, I don't have to freaking do. Okay. Cause sometimes it fails and sometimes I get really upset. Oh, by the way, before I get into the 50 inch vertical, while I got your full attention, hit that notification bell. And you know what it does today? Nothing. (laughs) There you go. Because I want to get to the story. Okay. 50 inch vertical. Do I think it's possible? First of all, I love 50 inch vertical because it's so perfect. It's a flat number, like a, a 10 number. It's my head to the rim at 5'10". My, my, my height is 60, 60 inches? No, 70 inches because I'm 5'10". 70 to 120, that's 50. It's such like a perfect goal. And then my head's at the rim and that's like, what else do I need to do? Eyes at the rim, of course. No, but I'm saying it's so cool how it's like, it's almost spiritual. Now, can I get there? The I think physically it's possible, but I think the hardest part is staying healthy. And if you can get that strong. So I talked to Daniel back on one of my podcasts, Jump Science, and he made he really opened my mind of like, it's not even about can you jump higher? It's can you get stronger? Because it's really hard to keep getting stronger. Like say I can squat at my best 350 or something like that. Like, right. I did. I don't know if I've ever done that, but I did like 315 times three one time. So my max, whatever. Can I use that muscle, get jump higher, raise my window, and then the next time I hit the strength phase, can I do that again? Can I increase again? Like, can I physically push more weight? And that's super tough. And I think you can, but I think the other thing is that it takes time. So can you stay healthy? Can you get stronger in the time window you have before your body deteriorates? Because we only have enough time. But I choose to also believe that in the future, we're going to keep learning about our tendons and muscles and friggin' skin that we're going to, our longevity is going to be insane. And if you look at somebody like Myrie Bowden, yes, he's probably got crazy genetics, but he's 34, 35, still jumping like crazy. And I like to think that me being 26 in 10 years when I'm 36, I can continue to get my body feeling really good. And Chase Skin Kiss is over 30 and he's training like an animal and he looks really good and jumps really well. Um, so there's just people out there that are already 
that age and I still I'm already I'm here and I know a lot more I might know more than them now or at least the the world of science knows more of them I'm a scientist and I'm also a nutritionist and a pharmaceutical representative so there's that but do I think you can hit a 50 yes and what I also what also think is crazy too which is to note is that I don't think 50 is that crazy anymore. Like if like Connor Barth, he's trying to get his freaking elbow uh, shoulder in the rim, like his armpit, I meant to say. And that's real. Like he's trying to get like 54, I think. And I th- that sounds crazy now, but it's just like anything else. As soon as somebody does it, it's not crazy. And then also like as soon as one person does it, a million people can do it. So if some if I hit 50 at 510 after all these years of training, so many people are going to hit 50. It's not going to be that crazy anymore. When I could, but when I started dunking, nobody was dunking in my circle, in my area, in, in my like five ten, except for my boy Andy, who's inspired my whole journey, who I'll never forget and will always uh, represent. Or what's it called? Shout out every chance I get. But like there was very, very few five ten white guys dunking. I, I don't know if I've ever saw one in person ever. So, but now it's like common. I go to the gym and it's common because everybody's seeing it's possible, and that's the beauties of social media. Um, also stick around for the freaking dunk tip of the day, which is about to come right now, probably dunk life tip of the day. Um, anything else I wanted to say before I get to that? Um, yeah, before I get to the dunk, that's it. I think it's possible for me. I'm trying, I hit 42.5 measured today. I'm healing this hamstring and I know it's a long journey, but this hamstring, my lower body hips and lower back and hamstrings have always been a real big problem for me. If I can get those, not if I'm going to change my, I'm peckable with my word. When I get those healthy, when I learn the anatomy, when I am um, better mobility and I have better understanding of what's tight and how to move it and how to strengthen it, I don't see any other ailments in my body. Yes, I can have accidents, but I had to work on my, uh, my knees. I had to work on my upper body. I had to work on my hips and my hamstrings. And now it's like, I feel like I'm in tune with almost every part of my body head to toe. And that's huge. Um, which will all be in the part two video of my, uh, how to jump higher, but 50 inches. I think I can do it. And I'm going to believe I can because that's another huge factor is believing you can. It's a long way to go. Eight inches, that's a ton. But I just think if I'm on a steady path, I can just keep going. Um, And there's a lot of inspirations out there. And I want to shoot for it, too. It's like I really want to shoot for it. The only thing about 50 is that um, if I hit 46, that would be absolutely absurd. Because for anything above 45 would just be and mind blowing because if I hit 42, 43, the way I feel on a nine, nine rim is how I want to feel on 10 feet. And that's only three more inches. So 46 about that would be insane. Like hitting East Bay's destroying dunks, head feels like near the rim and just easily dunking off like a one step. That's crazy. That's more what I want to do than really hit my head on the rim. I just want to dunk crazy easy and dunk in games on people like insanely easy because I just want to do it all the time and have fun with it. And that's what it's about having fun. Um, and before the dunk tip of the day, Check out my website for more tips and training, and also the Dunk Life Laws are free. Go check it out. I'm getting really good feedback, so thank you for that. And if you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out and shoot me a message if you liked it or not. It's really helpful. Um, yeah, just you'll see what it's about. It's free. It's a free download. Just go get it. And so the Dunk Tip of the Day, Dunk Life Tip of the Day I wanted to say is in dunking and in life, constantly gather data. So when you go to your workouts, when you go to your dunk sessions, gather data Always be learning of what your body can do, what it can't do, and understanding what that means and what you can learn from that. And write it down. Write down how many jumps you did, how you felt on each jump. The more data, the better. And you got to you keep gathering that data. And even if it doesn't make sense, then once it's all out and you have all this data, you can start to make sense of it. And that's what I'm learning from making this video of the past years. But I've been doing that. Anyway, that's why I'm making progress because I look back. Okay, what did I do wrong in that strength phase? Okay, how did I feel? Okay, what did I do? Okay, why did I jump really high now? Oh, because it took this many months to translate it. But why did I feel so awful? I'm learning and I went through my experience. So if you're learning now, you can learn from my experience. You can learn from other people's. Gather data in life too. Learn from other people that have done it. Learn from experts that are in the field. Keep asking. We're in such a great age if we we can communicate with anybody. So just keep pushing, keep gathering data, and also go inside your friggin' mind and meditate five minutes a day. I'm doing it. I did it this morning. I'm doing more of it. Keep doing it every single day. I think it's the most important thing. It's on that show too. Like I said, the stats, the friggin' what you gain from doing it every day. I'm, I don't know if five minutes is enough, but I'm going to start with it to get the routine. And then once it's a routine, I'm going to do it every single day. I want to do it. I never want to stop it. That's too much of a big, 
uh, goal. All right. Have a great day. This was fantastic. So you're welcome. And have a great effing Tuesday. Toodaloo Tuesday. Toodaloo. Always hoping that one day I don't need an introduction. I got too much on my mind that I'd rather be discussing. I be thinking existential. I got limitless potential. Now I'm looking in that mirror like that motherfucker.